Closely linked to the legendary gift-giving of St. Nicholas is the story of him providing a poor family with a bag of gold coins. As the story goes, he snuck up to his neighbor's house under the cover of night and dropped a bag of coins through an open window. This generous gift provided the family's three young daughters with dowries in order to wed. When the identity of the gift giver was revealed, the story likely spread along a popular trade route where Nicholas lived, a portion of southern Turkey once known as Lycia. Nicholas lived until about 350 AD, and those who trusted him in life, in fact, worshipped him after he died. One reason for this was the creation of patron saints, or spiritual protectors, who virtually replaced the roles of Roman gods. In keeping with this new doctrine, when Nicholas died and became a saint, he was selected to play the roles of several gods, in particular Neptune and Saturn. Neptune was the god of the sea, protector of sailors and all sea travelers. Saturn was the grandfather of the gods, protector of agriculture, justice, and time itself. In the afterlife, Nicholas then became very busy, saving stranded sea travelers or watching over the growing crops of Roman citizens. There is also a correlation between the gift-giving practices of a god called Odin, known among ancient German tribes in the Netherlands, with those of Saint Nicholas. This god rode across the night sky as a great hunter on an eight-legged horse named Sleipner. Children were convinced they needed to assist in the hunt in some way, so they placed a treat for Schleppner in their shoes by the fireplace, and in return, Odin would provide them with a small gift. In countries like France, Greece, Italy, Russia, the Netherlands, and many others, this tradition still continues, however the treats are now left for St. Nicholas. This happens on December 6th, the day that Nicholas died and also entered into the afterlife. On that day, he arrives in various towns on a white horse or a donkey, and sometimes he's covered in seawater to illustrate that he's been out on the sea saving sailors or travelers. Saint Nicholas, however, was not known to climb down chimneys until a book was written in America by Clement Moore in 1823. This book was later called Twas the Night Before Christmas, and it changed the way Christmas was celebrated in North America. Surprisingly, however, at that time, North Americans were accustomed to having St. Nicholas visit on New Year's Eve not on the eve of December 25th. In America, support for St. Nicholas arriving on New Year's Eve was so strong that the title of Moore's book was changed to Twas the Night Before New Year's. That is, until Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843, and afterwards Father Christmas in England or Santa Claus in North America began visiting on the eve of December 25th. Over the years, various artists created different images of St. Nicholas, and then, in the early 1900s, an artist of Dutch descent, Hayden Sunbloom, created the iconic drawings of Santa Claus. Sunbloom was hired by the Coca-Cola Company in 1931, but well before that time, in North America, the image of St. Nicholas or Santa Claus was used to promote various businesses or the buying of certain gifts. In many parts of the world, however, this image of St. Nicholas is not accepted. As well, worldwide, celebrations on December 6th are even more popular than those of December 25th. It seems most North Americans are unaware of the St. Nicholas Festival, or know that he is still a highly revered saint, still watching over sea travelers and growing crops. 
there are many churches or cathedrals in his name and pilgrimages in his honor. Recently, in England, Protestant churches have also begun Nicholas Fest, trying to express the real-life image of St. Nicholas.